Good morning, class. Welcome back to the second day of our grammar story read aloud. We are picking up our, the story of Robin Hood. Okay, so this is what would have been week nine. All right. Other men had been forced out of their inheritance because their insatiable king wanted their lands. Some had been despoiled by a great baron, rich abbot, or powerful squire. For one cause or another, all had come to Sherwood Forest, which was a vast, uncharted wood, where they might escape oppression. Thus, in all that year, a band of strong and good-hearted yeomen gathered about Robin Hood and chose him to be their leader. The yeomen vowed that they would, in return, rob their oppressors as they themselves had been robbed. If possessions were plundered by even the most powerful baron, abbot, knight, or squire, the yeomen would recapture the goods and return them to the poor. To those in need, these brave and upright men would offer succor. Besides this, they earnestly swore never to harm a child or to wrong a woman, whether she was a maid, wife, or widow. In times of desperation, these yeomen transferred money or food from the pockets of the corrupt nobility into the hands of impoverished families. Regularly, the common folk who came to praise Robin and his merry men related many tales of his audacious escapades. Naturally, because of Robin Hood's magnanimous work in Sherwood Forest, people felt that he was like them. In a sense, Robin had therefore returned to the town he had left, living vicariously through the town folk whom he was forced to leave. When birds were singing melodiously, oh, when birds were melodiously singing in the air, oak one fair morn, hidden among its dewy silent leaves, Robin Hood rose, needing a change. As he considered his next move, up rose his merry men, each fellow washing his head and hands in the cold, gurgling brook. From stone to stone they cavorted about, laughing and enjoying themselves. Clearly Robin was not captivated, captivated by the brook, as were his carefree festive men. For fourteen days we have enjoyed no sport, my friends, he complained. Without delay, I will journey abroad to seek adventures, Robin added. Tarry for me here. Only make certain that you're ready to heed my call, which will sound as three short blasts upon the bugle horn if I require your aid. Robin Hood set off. Widely he ranged through the forest in search of glorious adventure. When the path he took sharply curved, it brought him to a broad pebbly stream, spanned by a narrow wooden bridge. As he approached, he noticed a tall stranger who was resolutely striding toward the other side of the bridge. Robin quickened his pace when the stranger did too, since each imagined to cross first. "'If you know your best interest, stand back, sir,' demanded Robin brusquely, "'because a better man should cross first. "'No,' responded the confident interloper. "'You stand back yourself, since I am the better man.' The tall stranger continued, "'You stand there with a lethal bow to shoot at my heart, "'while I have only a plain blackthorn staff to meet you with.' "'By faith of my heart,' cried Robin, "'never have I been called a craven in my life. "'If you will remain on the other side while I quickly make a staff, "'I will lay aside my trusty arrows and test your sparring skills.' "'I welcome you to try,' countered the stranger with a twinkle in his eye. "'Gladly will I tarry here a while longer.'" And that is the second round of the Robin Hood story.